This podcast is sponsored by JJ's Waffles, serving Pawnee, our world-famous waffles, for over 45 years. Located in Pawnee, Indiana, at 122 Sunderland, between Tramp Sand Tattoos and the Chlorotech Cadam Refinery. We also thank Dunder Mifflin, selling you your paper by phone. With 70 years of experience, our paper is still amazingly mediocre. Welcome, everyone, to Coaster Talk, the podcast that no one but you listens to. Our first, and coincidentally, today's topic is Giga Coasters. I am your host, Everett Johnson, and I will be taking you riding along on the topic of Giga Coasters. First, a bit more about me. I'm a middle school student at PSI, and I have ridden on 46 roller coasters, including two Giga Coasters. Credentials that make t- totally make me eligible to deliver you today's podcast. But enough about me. Let's dive straight into today's podcast. This is the part of the podcast where most people will be saying, now, you're probably wondering, and to finish that sentence, what the heck a Giga Coaster is? Well, in Greek, Giga means giant, and that's exactly how I would describe these coasters. They are massive, standing at over 300 feet, or 91.5 meters tall. There are only seven of them in the world, produced by B&M. Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland in Ontario. Also produced by B&M is Fury 325 at Carowinds in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Orion at Kings Island in Ohio. The ones produced by Intamin are Red Force in Tarragona, Spain, Intamin Air 305 at Kings Dominion in Virginia, and Millennium Force at Cedar Point in Ohio. And, of course, Steel Dragon 2000, produced by Morgan at Nakashima Spaland in Japan. These coasters all need to use gravity to their advantage. In order to do that, they need to reach a very tall height, over 300 feet tall. This can be a challenge, given the sheer height of these incredible machines. In order to reach this height, they need a way to do it. This is accomplished in one of three ways. The first is a launch. Red Force is 367 feet, 111 meters tall, and reaches the top speed of the ride by an LSM launch, accelerating Red Force to its top speed of 180 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, in a mere five seconds. The second way is by cable lift hill. The two Giga coasters I have been on, Intimidator 305 and Millennium Force, both employ this method. A cable lift hill works by latching onto the coaster and pulling it up the hill at speeds of up to 40 kilometers an hour or 25 and a half miles an hour. This differs from a traditional lift hill because it uses a cable rope with a hook on a certain section to pull the train up the hill. Uh, Due to its lightness, it is also significantly faster than a traditional lift hill. Finally, the traditional lift hill is the opposite, with a chain dog on the roller coaster chains hooking onto the chain that moves the train up the hill. There are, as you probably know by now, seven Giga coasters worldwide. However, I have been fortunate enough to ride on two of them Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion, which is in Doswell, Virginia, and Millennium Force, which is at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. Following the rule of first things first, it was the first Giga Coaster. Millennium Force was built in the year 2000 by Intamin. It stands 310 feet, 94 meters tall. Riding up its chain lift hill, you look out over Lake Erie and the rest of the park. Then the chain lift hill detaches, and you plummet to the ground, running parallel to the lake road, traveling at the coaster's max speed of 93 miles an hour, or 150 kilometers an hour. The coaster then jerks you upwards into an overbanked turn. You then race down to a turn through a tunnel before going over an airtime hill into a helix to turn back towards the station. The train pulls you up to an airtime hill, a turn through a tunnel, and one final overbanked turn to the station. Two minutes and 2,010 meters, 6,595 feet later. Another Intamin, the first Giga I have ever ridden on, and by far the most intense. Getting on the ride, you hear, Gentlemen, start your engines, and you begin the climb up the 305-foot, 93-meter-tall chain lift hill, yelling as you plunge 300 feet, 91 meters, into a turn where you will not only be hit with the ride's top speed of 90 miles an hour, but also begin to black out as you are yanked out of the turn by an airtime hill, taking you under the lift hill. Going towards the station, you go through a series of whippy transitions before running back out to the end of the initial drop. Following this is a turn around back towards the station with two transitions and an airtime hill before racing into the station to complete the 3 minute, 5,100 foot, 1,554 meter layout. Moving on to this section, I like to call Coaster Questions. We have Kathy from Ohio. She asks, at my home park of Kings Island, we have a Giga Coaster, Orion, but it is only 287 feet tall. How is it a Giga? Good question, Kathy. What exactly defines a Giga Coaster isn't exactly agreed upon. 
considering the term GigaCoaster was actually a marketing tool invented by Cedar Fair, an amusement park chain. However, most would agree that GigaCoaster is a coaster with a 300 feet foot to 399 foot drop. Orion goes lower than where the ride starts, meaning that its 300 foot drop classifies it as a GigaCoaster. Our next question comes from Joe from Texas, who asks, which GigaCoaster is the tallest? Joe, the tallest GigaCoaster is Red Force, which stands at 367 feet, 111 meters tall. Our final question comes from Barnaby from California, who asks, Why are the only chain lift hill coasters built by Intamin? Why don't the ones from B&M use them? Well, Barnaby, it seems as though all Giga Coaster manufacturers want to have a fast lift hill. They are, after all, with the exception of Orion, 300 feet tall. The answer to that is that B&M actually uses its hypercoaster model when they build a Giga Coaster. The trains, track, and lift hill are actually all the same. The only difference is that the coasters have a 300 foot tall drop as opposed to 200 foot. Thank you to all of you who sent in questions. It is, as always, greatly appreciated. Please leave me a comment with your questions for our next podcast. This has been episode one of Coaster Talk with Everett Johnson. Right on.